Hey guys, I'm back. This time we'll be going over my Hellwalker Amara. And, well, I'll show you how it does in mobbing and in boss fighting. So, I have a question for you guys. Have you guys ever wanted to cause a battlefield to become a hellscape and destroy every living organism in the area? Including you sometimes. Well, then I have a build for you the Hellwalker Amara. This is a rush build, meaning we are going to get a lot of rush stacks to boost our action skill damage and status effect chance. First, we want Do No Harm and Violent Tapestry, and we will be ignoring Alacrity as our boosts from Rush. Now, we want Restless to reduce our action skill cooldown rate. Next we want Ascendant for Stillness of the Mind, which we will get back to. Next we want Laid Bear to boost our action skill damage more, and Wrath to boost our gun damage. And then finally we want Awakening to give us that effectiveness boost to our Rush stack. We then go back up to Transcend and put two points into Transcend. This will boost our crit damage and accuracy. And finally, we grab the capstone for Mystical Assault Avatar to give us a second grasp while our action skill is cooling down. And return half our rush stacks to us when we kill an enemy with our action skill. Now we jump over to Fist of the Elements. First, we want Anima for the status effect damage and duration. Next, we want Tempest to boost our elemental damage. Then we want 1 point in Illuminated Fist, 4 points into Wildfire to give our melee attacks, our action skill element, and to give our status effects the ability to spread. We will skip Dread and jump straight to M into Scrimmage so our elemental weapons can ricochet other targets. Next we want Catharsis, so when an enemy dies, he explodes, dealing damage to other enemies. Finally we grab Deep Well to boost our mag sets. Now we grab Fist Over Matter to give us some fists to smash our enemies that are phase locked, and Stillness of the Mind to phase lock nearby enemies when we phase lock. Now, let's go to items. The item we'll be using for the most part is the Hellwalker Shotgun, of course. Uh, this has minimal spread, which is good for doing the kind of damage we want it to. Uh, it's also elemental, unlike a lot of Jacob's shotguns, so it's great for our build. Because of that. And finally, since it's a Jacob shotgun, it does a bit more damage than most other shotguns. The rest of the weapons are there for you to pick and choose. Personally, I run a Nighthawk in, Lucian's Call, and Thunderball Fists to vary my elemental damage and still gain elemental boosts. Now we want to make sure we have a front loader to preserve 60% of our health and return it as shields, as well as to absorb some ammo. Next we want a Deathless so we can almost double our shield since we already reserved 60% of our health. Now we will lose all but 1 HP for a 100% boost to shields as well as giving us a 25% increase to our recharge rate and 25% decrease to our delay. This effectively doubles our shields. Now. I have a Corrosive Stone Deathless, but you can take any kind of Deathless you want. Next, Next we want a Phase Zerker class mod to Give us a plus 5 to our max rush stacks, so we can have a maximum of 30 rush stacks. 
but we also want to make sure we have a phase zerk replace mod that gives a boost to conflux so we can randomly apply a second status effect when we apply a single status effect. So then we go over to the grenade. The grenade you want is any large scale AoE grenade. I use a rain firestorm to make the battlefield worst for myself and my enemies. Now this is a mobbing build. It does really well in places like the Cistern of Slaughter, the Slaughter Shaft, the Slaughter Star. Considering you never really will have issues with the different types of health bars. With you doing shock, fire, and corrosive for the most part on all of your shots, you will eventually get to the point where health bars don't matter and basically it's just going to come down to how much health the enemy has. Now this is where we go over to bosses. So you have different bosses in the game. We have the main ones, Grave Lord and Tron. Grave Lord you deal with in less than a minute. However, then you got Tron. I fought him on Mayhem 3 with a dis with him being resistant to shock and gun damage basically. So I was doing less damage, he had a lot more health, but he was still fairly killable. It did take me a couple tries, as it was a bit more on the difficult side, but he's killable. Then you've got someone like Katagawa Ball, where he has three different health bars. He's got the armor, and then two, uh, well, shields. The armor, well, that was the only thing that I really had any difficulty with. Then the shields, I just pulled out of Thunderball Fists, and almost immediately dropped both his shields with it. But it's still a viable build for if you want to farm bosses on Mayhem 1. And, well, you just kind of just want to run around with a Hellwalker shotgun and feel like Doom Guy. Anyways, that is where we'll end this episode for today. You guys enjoy do what you guys do and i will see you guys in the next episode uh next episode will probably be a video on tomorrow well later today's release of the malawan black site so i'll see you guys